Hey everybody and welcome back and today we're going to be looking at how to write Scala for our fabric notebooks because as we mentioned previously Scala is one of the languages that we can use to write code, data engineering, data science code, Spark code within our Microsoft Fabric notebooks. So I'm going to be looking at why you might want to do that the advantages of doing that. We're going to be looking at how to do the basic fabric operations like reading files, writing to tables and things like that all in Scala. So let's jump into it. Okay, so I wanted to start off just with some background really. And I think it's important to know that Spark itself it, as an application, as open source code is written in Scala. And that Scala code is compiled for the Java virtual machine. So these are the, the two elements that you really need to know. Spark is written in Scala and it runs on the Java virtual machine. So if you're coming from the world of Power BI and you know some SQL maybe, and the thought of learning Python is a bit more appealing to you than learning Scala, just beware that there are some trade-offs because when we write Python in our Spark notebooks, what is actually happening there is there's a bit of translation going on. So there's a library called Py4j, which is basically the bridge between Python and Java. So whatever you write in Python, it has to translate that into something that is digestible in terms of like Java objects that Spark can understand under the hood. And that process of translation between Python and something the Java virtual machine can understand, that is slows down your code. If you're a really performant data engineer, then if you go into a, a company with like high level of data throughput, a lot of their Spark code is gonna be written in Scala. That's the language that Scala is written in. So there's no translation. That's kind of like the fastest code that you can write in Spark. The other thing to mention is because Spark is written in Scala, a lot of the new features come out in Scala first. So new functionality, updates, uh, bug fixes, those kind of things, typically are shipped in the Scala version first, and then the PySpark version follows. These days quite quickly, to be fair, like in the earlier versions, there was a bit of a lag there, but now it is fairly keeping up with one another. So it's less of a problem now that. So now we understand a little bit about Scala and the importance of Scala to Spark and the world of data engineering. Let's have a look at how we can do some basic operations in Scala. I know most of this course we've been focusing on Python because it's a bit more accessible to most people in the data space. But let's just go through a few lines of, of Scala just to understand how to do the basics in a notebook. Now the good news is from the syntax that we've been learning for Python, the syntax for Scala is actually very similar, at least to do the kind of core operations that you want to do. So what I've done is I've just got four or five code cells here to do some of the basic stuff that we've been doing previously in our other videos in PySpark. So at the top, we've got a spark.read.json and we're just reading in that JSON file, which is one of the JSON files we used previously in our course. And the only difference here is this assignment. So we have to specify that it's a val. You know, in Python, you don't need to specify, but in Scala, because Scala is statically typed language, we need to define exactly what that variable is. So if we run this, okay, so here you go. We just displayed this df underscore JSON. I had to change the name to df JSON just so that we're clear where that's coming from. And so this is the results. It's the same as our PySpark notebooks. It's exactly the same. Now, one thing that I didn't mention is you need to tell Fabric, the notebook, which language you want to use. And you can either do that at the top. So if you do that at the top, it changes the default language for that notebook. So up until this point, we've been using PySpark and Python. But if we change that to Spark Scala, that's going to change the default code cell to Scala. And you can see that in the bottom right hand corner here, we've got Spark Scala here. So that's showing you what language is being used in this code cell. So that's how to read some data from a file. We can also do some very basic reading data from our lake house tables. And again, you can see that this is identical, the syntax here. So it's spark.sql. The only difference is in the assignment. 
And so what they've done is they've spent quite a lot of time making sure that the APIs are as similar as possible. They're not 100% identical, but if you can write PySpark these days, the Scala API, all of the, the code that you're going to be writing in Scala, at least the Spark code, it's going to be very similar and that's because of the data frame object again so that unified the, the all of the apis and said okay we're going to write similar code across all different languages so that's this here what we've done here is just select star so we're using sql statements here but within a, a scala script select star from spark september dot property sales with a bit of a limit and then display the results which is what we've got here. We can also do very familiar things like df.json. Here we're just renaming some columns and we've seen this before. So if I just run this, so now we've got df.transformed. So if I just display that, should be the same, just with different column headers. Yeah, there you go. So you've got sale price USD like that. And in a similar method, we can use the data frame.write functionality. And it's exactly the same syntax. We're just writing to a delta table here. So that succeeded. And this is this property sales Scala. So I've saved it as a table and I've called it property sales Scala. So it's very basic, this kind of introduction to Scala. But the key points are that we can write our notebooks in Scala and it's likely to be faster in execution. 